What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to another fu overreaction video. Something I feel like I'm gonna have to do 38 times due to the amount of ridiculous tweets that get thrown my way after every single play. The NFL kicked off last night, week one, first game. Very happy about this, not happy about the game. Chicago, Green Bay, Green Bay walks away with the dub, 10 to three. Holy shit, that game was miserable. It had me begging to put the Tennessee Titans versus Cleveland Browns game on. Let's talk about some of the takeaways. Now, I'm not gonna do a takeaway video for every Thursday night football game or every fucking game that happens, but I know there were a lot of fantasy players involved in this one, and I kinda wanna get my thoughts out there because I have a lot of strong opinions based off the first game. Let's talk about Green Bay. Well, I think we have to talk about Chicago in order to talk about Green Bay because Chicago's defense is every bit as legit as they were last year, despite losing Vic Fangio. That pressure on the running game, up the middle, on Aaron Rodgers, holy shit. All the analytics people can talk about Chicago's defense regressing just because they were too good last year. I say fuck them because Chicago's defense is unbelievable and it's almost impossible to start running backs against the Chicago defense, which leads us to Aaron Jones. Everybody's tilting about Aaron Jones. It's like, if only, if only we made a video two days ago talking about how Aaron Jones was going to struggle early on in the season and how he was a good buy low candidate. I fucking wish we put that out on our channel. Oh, we did. That's right. So stop worrying about Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones was in on 61% of the snaps last night. I know it was concerning to see Jamal Williams out there. Aaron Jones had a 67% opportunity share. Between targets and carries, Aaron Jones saw 67% of them. Said all offseason, I didn't want Aaron Jones to touch the ball on 90, 90, 95% of the running back touches. That's how a guy like Aaron Jones gets hurt. I like the 67, 70-ish percent touch share for Aaron Jones. That was perfect. The effectiveness of the running backs was far from perfect. That's because the Chicago fucking defense is ridiculous. You can't run on them. And Matt LaFleur was miserable. Now, Aaron Jones rushed the ball 13 times for 39 yards. Jamal Williams took five carries. That's it. He had five carries for zero yards. The concern is in the passing game because all summer we heard Matt LaFleur talking about how he wants to get the ball to the running backs in space through the air. That didn't happen. Aaron Jones caught one ball. Jamal Williams caught two passes. So they had to combine three catches on the game last night, and I believe they only had three, maybe four targets combined. That was the worrying part. However, when I look at it, Aaron Jones had a target, his only target in the game, on the first or the, the first drive, the second play of the game, which tells you that that was, you know, most teams have their first few plays scripted out, what they're going to do, depending on how the first play works out, but they have a handful of plays that they know they're going to run out of the gate. The fact that they had Aaron Jones set up for a screen on the second play of the game tells you that they were ready to have that as part of their game plan. Like they wanted to get the ball to Aaron Jones. They wanted to get the ball into their running back's hands in the passing game. However, what I think happened is the Bears defense just absolutely made Matt LaFleur shit the bed and overwhelmed him. And because of that, he had to switch up his game plan and he was calling erratic plays and the offense looked terrible. Now that is that is the biggest concern going forward is what is Matt LaFleur going to do? Is he going to be able to stick to his game plan? Is he going to be able to continue to do the things that he wants to do? That I don't know. But in terms of worrying about Aaron Jones, don't be worried about Aaron Jones. Chicago's defense is ridiculous. Aaron Jones played the perfect amount of plays that we need him to. They just need to get him a little bit more involved in the passing game, which I think would have happened if Chicago's defense wasn't swarming in the fucking backfield the entire time. In terms of receivers, obviously guys, like I, you don't need to comment on every single player every time someone has a bad game. What do I do with Devontae Adams? You fucking hold on to him. He was like the seventh overall pick. He'll be fine. He got plenty of targets. Again, Aaron Rodgers was under pressure the entire night. He threw for like 200 passing yards. How do you expect anyone to really succeed? One guy that kind of succeeded, actually two guys on the Packers passing offense, MVS and Jimmy Graham. So if you thought Geronimo Allison was actually the good pick here between MVS and Geronimo Allison, you're going to be sorely disappointed. And we had kind of talked about that all offseason. Uh, there were 52 snaps for the Green Bay offense last night, which just overall is a horrible snap count. They're going to see a lot more plays on a game over game basis than they did last night. More overall volume for the offense. Again, don't fret about the Packers offense. Devontae Adams played 46 of 52. MVS played 41 of 52. Geronimo played 30 of 52. This is what I echoed to you guys all offseason. If you were trying to decide between Allison and MBS, we already knew. They told us that MBS was the wide receiver two in this offense. So when they went out of wide receiver two sets, Allison was off the field. So if you thought production-wise or skill-wise they were even, that should have been the tiebreaker for you if you were choosing between the two because just by default, Allison being off the field on wide, or on two wide receiver sets means that he's automatically playing like 15%, 20% less snaps than MVS's. And that's what we saw. MVS, 
41 of 52 snaps. Allison, 30 of 52 snaps. I also, you know, everyone was like, oh, Roger just targets the slot. That's what he does. It's like, no, he doesn't. He throws the ball downfield, people. And we saw that with MBS. MBS looks explosive. Again, once, pa- uh, once the Packers and Rodgers have more time to throw the ball. Listen, all things considered how good the Bears defense looked, I am optimistic about Rodgers, about MVS, about Aaron Jones, and about Devontae Adams. The last guy I'm optimistic about is Jimmy Graham. He had six targets last night, which was a 20% target share. Now, I talked about in one of the Fade the Public videos that we did a month ago, our favorite values at each position. Jimmy Graham was one of my favorite values at the tight end position. Um, And it was because, one, everyone was so high on him last year and he didn't play well. So his ADP moved back so far in drafts. Jimmy Graham's a guy I would definitely pick up on the waiver wire if you selected a guy like, you know, Mark Andrews or someone like that because Mark Andrews is only playing on like 35% of the snaps for this offense. We'll see what happens this weekend, but a little bit concerning for me. So Jimmy Graham is a guy who was targeted heavily last night. He was targeted in the red zone, right? He caught the touchdown pass. He was targeted over the middle too. So Jimmy Graham is in a good spot to succeed. Like realistically, his 600, 650 receiving yards last year was among like the top, you know, six to eight range but his touchdown number went down, right? And we only were going to see positive regression in the touchdown department. And we already saw the first one one last night. He caught two touchdowns all of last year. I believe it was two. Um, So if Aaron Rodgers spikes his touchdown rate back up to where it was over his normal career percentage, we're going to see a big uptick in touchdowns for Jimmy Graham. So I low-key like Jimmy Graham a lot as well as a streamer if he was available on your waiver wire. I believe those are all the takeaways for the Green Bay side. Williams looks like the handcuff again to Aaron Jones. I mean, Aaron Jones was in on a bunch of third downs. Jamal Williams was, they kept putting him into pass block. He's definitely a better pass blocker than Aaron Jones. I'm not worried about that for fantasy. Um, And, you know, the entire fourth quarter, it was all Aaron Jones. You know who they trust at running back. Soon as there are more lanes opening up, he looked like his old elusive self that he always has been considering the lack of holes that the offensive line was opening up. So that is my takeaway from the Green Bay side. If we switch over to the Bears side, a few things we need to point out immediately. We have all of the nonsense about David Montgomery. Oh my God, what do I do with David Montgomery? If you drafted David Montgomery thinking that he wasn't going to start the year in a committee, honestly, guys, you have no idea what the fuck you're doing in fantasy football. the, the, The most obvious thing that's ever going to happen is basically every rookie running back is going to start in a committee outside of first round picks like Josh Jacobs won't start in a committee probably but he'll probably end in a committee. That's that's the difference here. David Montgomery easily looked like the best running back on the field last night for the Bears. They kept taking him off. That's going to happen. Veterans are going to play in the beginning of the season. What I expect to happen is David Montgomery will slowly... I was talking to my roommate last night before the game. He's a Bears fan, but he doesn't follow fantasy football and football throughout the offseason like I do. He's like, he's like, yo, what's good with like Mike Davis? Like, What's going to happen with their touch splits and shit. And I was like, what's going to happen at the beginning of the year, Mike Davis is going to be very involved in the offense. And then by a month in, David Montgomery is going to take over and he's going to be the main back in that backfield. So David Montgomery, great buy low opportunity if for some reason someone expected him to be the workhorse out of the gate. He is going to be the workhorse, but you have to wait like a month for this to happen. He looked really fucking good last night on the limited touches that they got. Green Bay's defense looked really good too. I think they're going to be one of the top fantasy defenses um, this year as well. They might have looked good because they were going against Mitch Trubisky, who looked fucking awful. He might lead the league in interceptions. Um, This was something I think I've said throughout the summer. Last year, he got so lucky. His touchdown interception ratio was good, but he had like 10 interceptions that were just dropped by the defense, straight up dropped that just turned into touchdowns. And we saw that last night. They didn't turn into touchdowns, but he he should have thrown three picks last night easily, maybe even more. He ended up with one interception, I think. Um, but Mitch Trubisky, oh man, his throwing did not look good. Allen Robinson, however, looked phenomenal. Um, and I wish I got more shares of him. I do have one share of him out of the four season long leagues I'm in, but I wish I picked him up in a couple other leagues. Uh, he had 13 targets. He caught 10 ball or seven of 13 for 102. He looked explosive. He looked like his old self. Um, and if Mitch Trubisky is going to target him like he did last night, Allen Robinson is going to return like high-end wide receiver two value. So um, he's not really a buy low at this point. But if someone's worried about Mitch Trubisky, I would go out and grab Allen Robinson ASAP. He looked fucking phenomenal. Wouldn't touch any other pass catcher in the offense, except for the Bears' new starting slot wide receiver, Tariq Cohen. If we're going off of last night's game, Tariq Cohen is no longer a running back for Chicago. He is the starting slot wide receiver. Last night, he played on 50 snaps. Four of them came out of the backfield. That is 8%. 39% of them, seven or 39 out of 50, 79% came from the slot. Seven of them, almost, almost double the amount of backfield snaps came out wide. So 92% of his snaps last night came 
from the slot or out wide. Now, I don't know if, if this game just became a shit show and both teams had to deviate from their game plan and maybe that's what happened. We don't like to go nuts about a one game sample size, but that is a big takeaway. It was all Mike Davis. It was all David Montgomery in the backfield. Tariq Cohen looks to be more of a wide receiver this year for the Bears than an actual running back which is great for his PPR value. I think he caught eight passes last night. Good news if you drafted him in a PPR league because anytime you're running out of the slot or out wide, you know, you're going to get a high number of targets. So stock up, stock down after this game. Here's where, here's where we'll put it. Aaron Rodgers, same. MVS, up. Loved what I saw from him last night and Rodgers taking deep shots to him. They were running a lot of scripted plays to him, a lot of screens, a lot of short line of scrimmage kind of throws. Devontae Adams, he's fine, hold. Aaron Jones, he's fine, hold. Jimmy Graham, stock up. Um, I would say Allison, stock down. Green Bay defense as well, stock up. Other side, Chicago, Trubisky, stock down. Allen Robinson, stock up. Anthony Miller, stock down. Tariq Cohen, stock up. David Montgomery, hold, he's fine. Mike Davis, hold, he's fine as well. And I think that that was it, basically, all the takeaways that I had. So David Montgomery is going to be fine. Aaron Jones, going to be fine. MVS, breakout, incoming. Devontae Adams, don't fret. Uh, Tariq Cohen is now a slot wide receiver. That's all I had because I need to answer y'all questions because y'all go nuts after every fucking game. We will be doing exclusive content all in season on patreon.com. That is where you will be able to find my waiver wire article. I do a private live stream for my patrons only every Saturday afternoon where you can ask me your sit starts. We also have a community slash forum on Patreon where myself, Noah at FB God, Animal and Snacks will be answering all of your questions. My weekly rankings, of course. So you'll get my weekly rankings each week. Private live stream, weekly rankings, community forum, and my waiver wire article. Patreon.com slash BDGE, and that's it. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thank you all for joining me, and relax.